T'es pas obligé de le clip, il se clip ouais, pas. Clip. Faut juste le pousser. Alright, so this is how we're rigging our bait. Little mother, I caught in the cast net. Spine, um, go through, go back through again, push the hook all the way down. That's the first hook. We want the other hook to be pointing out the opposite way in case a snapper attacks the other way. So start, spike it through the same way as the last one, but quite a bit high. Spin it around, go back through it, and so you do it if you can. Do a half edge around the top to stop it from crumbling up. Stays this nice shape, and then throw that out. Now this is probably my PB snapper. Now that's a big one boys. I think we got dinner. Going back down. Third cast, third fish. Still haven't had time to rig up that rod. Oh. This might be a better fish. Hopefully those hooks don't swing around and hook me in the face. Oh, wind's picking up. Getting a bit cold. I'd say probably legal. Thank you very much for your food. Oh, and we've got him on the cup. Cup that I shot in Cambridge, Waikato River. There we go. And close this so he stays nice and cold. Give our hands a little bit of a wash.
And there we go. Woo! That one's being mowed. And the little fella goes back. Alright guys, so this is the snapper we had today. We just caught. Um, 32 centimeters. And I'm going to show you a way of getting as much meat as possible of this fish. Sorry if I'm not speaking too loud, my neighbors are around and I don't want to disturb them. So what you'll need is a filleting knife, a normal knife that can grunt through a few things, um, a knife that can crunch through bone, so a knife you don't really care if it's unsharpened, a scale, a plate and tray to put all your fillets and stuff on, paper towels because I don't have salt water around me, so I don't want to be washing my fillets in fresh water because that's the worst thing you can do to them. And a hose to clean for your scales. All right, so to start, use the back of your blade and scrape as much slime as you can off your fish because the fishy smell with all the bacteria and stuff when your fillet turns brown, that's actually fish slime and dying bacteria, not fish. So, scrape all of it off, look at all that slime. Don't want that on the fish when I'm cooking it or anything. So yeah, scrape. And do that to both sides. Well, now that I've scaled it, I can give it a wash. All my scales are over there. Give my scaler a wash and we'll get into the filleting. Okay, so here what I've done, I've cut into the head as far as possible to get as much meat, come down and finish at the anal cavity. Because you don't want to be cutting back in here because you'll get all those guts on your fill and you don't want that because you don't want to have to wash it. Now that you've done that cut, you can come around the head, fold it down the backbone and keep in contact on that tail. I mean, on the body. Nice, nice and sharp knife helps. And cool your knife down so you get as much meat as possible. And even, this technique is great for beginners because even if you mess up and leave a bit of meat on the bone we're gonna be eating all that so it's fine don't worry then once you've gone down to the tail to the same thing on this area go out there isn't a lot of meat there's actually no meat here but you're gonna need that when you're skinning so now come back up Stay in contact with the body. Try and not get spined in the finger like I just did. And then lift up the meat. Come down and look at that. No meat wasted. Keep going until the back one. Ooh, bit of meat wasted here, but that's okay. Keep coming until you get to the back one. Instead of crushing through this um, rib cage and getting all the guts on your fillet, you're going to go over the rib cage, over it like that. Even if you leave a bit of meat on the rib cage, that's fine because we're going to cook the wings up. Just keep going. No rib cage on that. Go over. And there. And that is one fillet. A bit of meat wasted there and here. That's fine. Because the main part, no meat wasted. And that's great. And now, you can get rid of the pin bones here. You can feel them with your finger. Ooh, get rid of some of that slime and scales on there. Feel with your finger where the pin bones are. Start at the last one, 
cut out, feel, start, cut out, and even the pin bones we have a use for them. We have a use for pretty much everything in this fish except for scales and guts. This fish had pretty much no pin bones, so that's perfect. We can put the pin bones over here, because pin bones are very good to eat. Pretty much no pin bones on that fish, that's perfect. Okay, so this is what your fillet should look like, pin bones removed. And now that we've scaled the skin, we can actually eat the skin. It makes like french fries, skin crackle, it's so s crackly and good. So, this bit of skin, start where there's a little bit of meat, cut back on and go until you get to the skin, and go back over. Now, since we've scaled the skin, it's very fragile, so it would be hard to skin without ripping it. And even if you can, try and leave a bit of meat on there, because the fat is what is gonna make the skin crackle taste really good okay so this is what you should have so far you'll fill it with no skin then your skin that just rub rock salt on there and cut into fine bits which I'm going to do right now and then this is what each piece of your fish skin crackle should look like and I keep doing that and this can all go in the pile over here. Okay, so this is what your fillet should look like. We're gonna make little fish and chips with this. We're gonna deep fry it. So, cut into two fillets like that, and then good bite size portions. And all these go into our deep fry plate. Now that the filleting is gone, we're gonna get into the wings. So if I lift up the gill at the apex, that's what it's called, there's a little, little plate there, and don't cut towards yourself, your hand. Come down all the way down here. Finish off at the bottom of the muscle. Now I've got to come around, cut the gills, the throat. I actually preferably do this with this knife. There we go. Now you can come to here, cut upwards, should, the wings should come right off if you just cut around the gills now. There we go. I can leave a bit of meat there because we're eating that. That's one side, flip it over, go to the other. Pretty much like the fillet, go over the rib cage. And there we go, that's your wings. Not massive because it's only a 32 centimeter snapper, but if you just cut down there, Open up the wings. There we go. That can go straight in the pot, but we're going to clean it a bit because of the guts. Mm. Try not to drop it. And this is really important to get because a lot of people reckon the best meat is in the throat. Best meat is closest to the bone because that's where all the fat is stored. There we go. All right. Now that we've removed the wings, we can cut out the guts. And here's the heart, here's the livers. A lot of people eat the livers, but I'm not a huge fan, so we're just gonna 
give them to the worms in the compost. Now, we're just going to remove the gills, and after that, all the heads and bones and ribs, that's all really good meat to eat because it's all close to the bone. Now, now that I've given it a rub with the paper towels, we can snap the backbone. Sorry if you hate bones breaking. Got the head, cheeks, best part, head, and a lot of people like the eyes. And then here with the backbone, heaps of meat in between those bones when you remove it, and it's really good. All right, so we have our skin with a bit of fat on them so they can cook. Uh, we're waiting to put in the fish um, fillets and put this in the oven because potatoes take longer to cook, so we're just waiting. All right, so the tray. Look, we only got one pin bone because the other fillet, the other side had pretty much no pin, boy, pin bones, which is very impressive. So the oven is at 180 degrees with fan grill and it's going in at the bottom and right above it it's going to be, oh actually quite high above it because we want it to crackle. So. We want it quite close to the heat. Okay, so I'm standing big back for this, but if it is ready, that should happen. Sizzle. So grab the trunks or whatever. And, oh, that was not meant to happen. And slowly drop your pieces of fish. And dans le four, ça ressemble à quoi? Ça a l'air bon. Pepper towel, so it absorbs the oil. Okay, so once it looks, once it looks cooked, take it out because it's better not cooked enough than too cooked because you can always put it back in the oven. Fresh skin crackle definitely looks cooked enough. And this one, yeah, that looks good. Sorry if the GoPro is fogging up. We will clean that after, but that looks good. So the way you test it's good, you grab the top bone, try not burn yourself, and peel it off, and if it comes right off like that, and it's cooked. Mm. Yeah, it's cooked. All right, let's test one of these pieces just to see if they're cooked. Oh God. That looks okay. 